Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today I'm very excited to continue the Bhagavad Gita series as always. But today I am a bit more excited than usual because we have reached one of the most crucial verses. This is like a this is like a junction, or this is like a mark in your study of Bhagavad Gita. It's like a milestone, all right? This is a very, 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 very unlimited term times, very important verse. Because if you understand this verse, you have understood 10% <laughs> of the Gita, maybe at least 1%, all right? So this is a very important verse and we will start by offering prayers to our preceptors, Om Agyan Timiran Hasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama. So there you go. Second chapter, 13th verse. Here we are, 2.13. And because this is a very important verse, we will recite it three times. All right. We must recite every verse three times, but because of the interest of time, I recite only once and the next verse is oh, another. <laughs> I wish I can keep discussing these verses, you know, for eternity to come, but unfortunately time doesn't <laughs> allow us to do that. We will bring time on our side. All right. So second chapter, 13th verse. Dehi no dehe kaumaram yovanam jara. Once more. Last. We will go to the translation. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. All right. So if you have not watched the previous videos, please watch it because you may not understand. So in the previous verse, we saw Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So Krishna was telling to Arjuna that these kings always existed and the individuality of the soul was stressed in the previous verse. And this is the new magical verse. The last verse was also magical. This is also magical. And the next verse is even more magical, especially the next verse for Kali Yuga is the most magical verse. All right, so let us go to the purport. Since every living entity is an individual soul, each is changing his body every moment, manifesting sometimes as a child, sometimes as a youth, sometimes as an old man. Yet the same spirit soul is there. Point to be noted and does not undergo any change. This individual soul finally changes the body at death and transmigrates to another body. And since it is sure to have another body in the next birth, either material or spiritual, there was no cause for lamentation by Arjuna on account of death, neither for Bhishma nor for Drona, for whom he was so much concerned. So, what's the point here? The point is that the body is changing every moment. And ultimately, the soul remains the same. The soul doesn't change. But at the end of our, during the, during, during the moment when we die, that time we leave this body and we go to another body. Now, why is it said that it is sure to have another body in the next, but either material or spiritual. 
what is the meaning of this statement this means that if we are having any material desire any means any material desire it can be anything i want to no, buy a car or I want to it, it can be something very simple my guru used to say even if you have a desire at the time of your death that oh I wish I could eat that gulab jamun because of my old age I am not able to eat or maybe I wish I could enjoy with that member of the opposite sex whatever is the desire then we will take another body a material body which means the soul will enter into another material body but it is said either material or spiritual that means at the end of our life if we have spiritual desires then we will not take another birth we will go back to the spiritual realm all right that is why it is said that material or spiritual so there was no cause for lamentation by arjuna on account of death for bhishma or drona rather he should rejoice for changing their bodies from old ones to new thereby rejuvenating their energy such changes of body account for varieties of enjoyment or suffering according to one's work in life so bhishma and drona being noble souls were surely going to have spiritual bodies in the next life or at least in at least life in heavenly bodies for superior enjoyment of material existence so in either case there was no cause for lamentation so it's mentioned here that because bhishma and drona are extraordinary personalities they are bhishma is one of the 12 mahajans of course so i am bho narada shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlado janako bhishmo balir vaya sakhi vayam that is the shloka which says you know bhishma is one of the 12 mahajans who says this yamaraj is telling this to the amadutas uh this shloka comes in shrimad bhagavatam of course so and drona is also a great personality he is the son of the great rishi bharadwaj but not just because he is son of a rishi but he himself is also a very great personality they, they were very noble souls uh, but unfortunately they still had to side in uh, with duryodhan and they had to fight on his behalf so now they may get spiritual bodies when they die if they cultivate spiritual desires at the end of their life or at least even if they do not go back to the spiritual world they will definitely attain the heavenly realms which is a higher realm within the material world for superior materialistic enjoyment so in either case there was no cause for lamentation this is what krishna is telling to arjuna any man who has perfect knowledge of the constitution of the individual soul the super soul and nature both material and spiritual is called a dhira or a most sober man such a man is never deluded by the change of bodies the mayavadi theory of oneness of the spirit soul cannot be entertained on the ground that the spirit soul cannot be cut into pieces as a fragmental portion such cutting into different individual souls would make the supreme cleavable or changeable against the principle of the super soul supreme souls being unchangeable as confirmed in the gita the fragmental portions of the supreme exist eternally sanatan and are called chara that is they have a tendency to fall down into material nature these fragmented portions are eternally so and even after liberation the individual soul remains the same fragmental but once liberated he lives an eternal life in bliss and knowledge with his with the personality of godhead the theory of reflection can be applied to the super soul wow who is present in each and every individual body and is known as the paramatma he is different from the individual living entity when the sky is reflected in water the reflections represent both the sun and the moon and the stars also the stars can be compared to the living entities and the sun or the moon to the supreme lord fantastic the living fragment the the individual fragmental spirit soul is represented by arjuna and the supreme soul is the personality of god at shri krishna 
they are not on the same level as it will be apparent in the beginning of the fourth chapter if arjuna is on the same level with krishna and krishna is not superior to arjuna then their relationship of instructor and instructed becomes meaningless if both of them are deluded by the illusory energy maya then there is no such need of being the instructor and the other the instructed such instruction would be useless because in the clutches of maya no one can be an authoritative instructor under the circumstances it is admitted that lord krishna is the supreme lord superior in position to the living entity arjuna who is forgetful who is a forgetful soul deluded by maya all right so so the definition of dhira is given what's the definition of dhira any man who has perfect knowledge of the constitution of the individual soul the super soul and nature both material and spiritual is called a dhira or a most sober man such a man is never deluded by the change of bodies so this means that one who knows that i am a spirit soul and then there is god who is the supreme soul right satchit ananda both are satchit ananda he or she is a dhira he <laughs> yes this word is very frequently used in the scriptures the word dhira why 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 is he called a dhira because then he knows that every individual soul who has taken birth in this material world is enjoying or suffering results of his or her own karma and therefore he also knows that he himself has a particular karma yes the dhira knows that i have to enjoy and i have to suffer this much so he does not get bewildered when things are taken away from him or he doesn't get obsessed when he gets new things all right because he knows that these are all temporary i am temporary in this body although as a soul i am eternal but my existence in this body is temporary so why should i be bewildered today i have something tomorrow maybe i don't have that by my karma but i me i will always remain eternal nobody can kill me nayanam chindanti shastrani nayanam dahati pavakah that shloka is there we will go to that later <laughs> yes so now the most important thing which is stressed here is that the living entity and god they are different different means qualitatively uh, they are same they are both satchit ananda which means satchit ananda means they are full of sat chit and ananda these three things they are eternal full of knowledge and full of bliss that is that's the similarity between the living entity and the super soul but what's the difference the difference is in quantity the living being is tiny tiny doesn't mean by size and the supreme soul who is krishna he is unlimited all right and the living being is actually also unlimited when he uh, when he becomes happy by serving god then his happiness is also unlimited okay like god's happiness so therefore one should understand that why at all we are listening to krishna from the gita why at all because many times people uh, have these weird uh, fake false conceptions that sometimes people say oh the law of karma is so powerful you know that even personalities like lord ramachandra and lord krishna are also bound by it. okay so for example they will say oh lord ram actually suffered you know uh, his wife was kidnapped and later on he could not stay with her and then krishna also suffered his parents suffered all right so actually law of karma is supreme okay and therefore even if vishnu takes avatar he has to suffer all right that is a sh- that's sh- sheer perversity that's that's a nonsense because god vishnu he is not bound by the law of karma he chooses to teach some lessons voluntarily because 
if he is also under law of karma as it's written here if he is also deluded by the illusory energy maya then there is no need of being the instructor and the other instructed so if if krishna is also under the law of karma yes then how can he at all claim that okay i will instruct you on the bhagavad gita or why at all should we take his instruction seriously because he is just like another person yes that's all finished just just stop it no it's not like that he is not bound by the law of karma like we are all right so the tendency of materialistic people is they try to put everything in their own light so that means they think that oh my karma is there oh look 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 even ram has karma and even krishna has karma they are not bound by karma they are just they are just doing the leela so that they can teach us certain lessons so for example if what to speak of ram and krishna let's go to lord nursing dev so when we are discussing of nursing dev if you uh, go to the uh, shrimad bhagavatam and study there's something very interesting you will find there so in that what happens lord brahma is telling to lord nursing dev that my dear lord please don't be, see what happened was nursing dev was playing with hiranyakashyap playing means he was not killing him directly hiranyakashyap was hitting then he was hitting him. it's like it's like he was just having fun you know he comes and he throws him <laughs> so then lord brahma tells to nursing dev that my dear lord please don't keep playing with him like this because when the sun will set when the sun is setting you know because these rakshasas these these daityas these the demons the asuras their power increases 10 times 100 times 1000 times so before sunset please kill him and finish off this business please don't keep playing like this now brahma is also one of the 12 mahajans brahma is a great personality he is fully aware that nursing dev is vishnu himself and whatever he does is it sunset sunrise morning dusk evening doesn't matter here in akashapu cannot do anything he is just dead at any moment he can die but why does lord brahma say like this because not because that he he is fearing that nursing dev will have some karma and then hiranyakashyapu will overpower him you know it's not that that's not the reason it, it appears to be like that apparently but the but the reason the main reason why he says that because although he knows that nursing dev is the supreme he is the all powerful vishnu but still he is a person and as a person he is concerned for another person so brahma is a person and nursing dev is a person as a person he is concerned about another person so deep down inside philosophically brahma ji fully knows that yes nobody can defeat nursing dev <laughs> what is because defeating is impossible because he is the source of all strength how can you defeat him it's not possible but still he says that because he thinks ah, i'm a person he's a person so better kill him when he is at his weakest right because brahma ji is not very happy to see that <laughs> hiranyakashyapu you know exerts more pressure and all that. and after brahma ji requests hiranyakashyapu is finished he's wiped off his intestines are out and he's bleeding and he falls down dead all right so when somebody reads that verse they may also think oh, okay nursing dev also has some karma okay my god maybe hiranyakashyapu would have overpowered him if brahma if brahma ji would have not said that you know if only nursing dev would have delayed you know maybe nursing dev would have been defeated there are people who say this that's so foolish because that's what pralad says that all the strength all the power of the world that you have inside you my dear father pralad maharaj says oh best of the demons hena kashyap wow what an ornament you know best of the demons says 
uh, you your power my power every power of this entire world is coming from lord vishnu himself from lord nursing dev so it is by any means mathematically scientifically or philosophically it is not possible that nursing dev is defeated by hiranyakashipu but still pralad feels like that and brahma also brahma ji also feels that he should kill him because as a person he is concerned about lord nursing dev although philosophically knows you know so we should never think that god is also under law of karma oh, okay because of that he suffered this happened that, that that's sheer nonsense it doesn't happen like that and the importance of dhira has been stressed in this verse so the conclusion of this verse is the the changes which we are undergoing in this world they are temporary actually change is permanent but the uh, expression of change you know that's temporary that keeps happening so they say the only thing constant in this material world is change so change is like always happening but now we are small we are young then we are bit elder then we are older then we are not even able to see or walk and we die that is temporary now from our perspective we think that oh it's you know whole life yes that's what we think people say oh my god how can you say it's so small you know it's freaking 80 90 100 years of life well yes that's true but if you see from a eternal perspective from a higher principle you will realize that that's nothing actually you know there's like eternity is there you know one 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 lifetime of brahma 311 trillion years so that's nothing in comparison to our life span is nothing in comparison to his and that is also a limited number although it's a very big number but time is eternal time is like there is no there is no you cannot quantify time you know oh it's this much or is that much so when we understand that we are a spirit soul we we are actually not undergoing these changes yes so it's not that i am dying it's not that i am becoming younger or youthful or older elder whatever I, nothing is happening to me i i am out of all this so suppose tomorrow i lose something so it's not that i am losing them so when we know this then we become sober because we know we have nothing to gain and lose because that's just a matter of our body and our conception of being in this world i think this is my mobile yes that is why i suffer if this mobile is lost or somebody snatches it from me or i lose it somewhere yes or i give it to somebody and that person loses it either ways i will suffer now that does not mean that we become irresponsible no anyways you know it's like it's not my exam you know why should i study leave it whatever is there in my karma will happen you know i will just get the marks which i am destined to well you will get your marks 90 100 70 60 whatever it is whatever is destined you will get that but you also have to make the necessary effort without making the effort you won't get whatever is destined as a result because that destiny is a result of your actions if you don't do actions only then how will you get it's not possible so don't think that dhira or a sober person means oh he's not doing anything he's just sitting you know just chilling you know just forgetting everything no it's not like that. whatever he has to do he does he does it very very diligently very shrewdly like arjuna fights in the kurukshetra war yes and he is known as savya sachi which means he is like the best when he had to kill jayadrath you know 11 miles 11 freaking long mile the kuru sena was the army of the kurus were 11 miles can you just imagine can you just imagine walking 11 miles in a day it's almost it's, it's very difficult sometimes people do govardhan parikrama that's around 21 kilometers but that's so difficult what to speak of you know fighting that many miles so 
Arjuna does not say, oh, anyways, Krishna, you told her, who are these people? You know, these are, I am nobody, they are nobody. It's not like that. So whatever is our duty, we must do that. There is no compromise on that. And apart from that, we have to understand at a higher principle that all these things which we are facing is not actually affecting me internally as a soul. Now, if we are attached to material objects, then it will definitely affect us. Because then we forget that we are a soul. We think, oh, I am this body. I am staying here. This is mine. He is mine. She is mine. That is mine. This is mine. And then there's some problem. Things go haywire. Right. So that is it from my side. A very important verse. And the next verse is even more important. Right. So stay tuned for the next verse. The next verse is very important for Kali Yuga, People of Kali Yuga, especially this age. And especially 21st century, 2019, ah, hopefully 2020 soon. All right, thank you very much. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it and share the Bhagavad Gita videos. All right, thank you very much. Good luck.